It's that time of the year when many people flock to beaches, resort towns, and weekend getaways. Those communities can be quite dependent on foreign workers to help staff them through the summer season. But this year has a different kind of pressure point as the Trump administration has pushed for some big changes in immigration rules. Economics correspondent Paul Salmon has a look at the impact of this supply and demand story. It's part of his weekly series, Making Sense. Ah, the iconic seaside summer getaway Provincetown at the tip of Cape Cod. A single mom prison guard in New York State, Joy McNulty, got away here to bring up her four kids in a safe place and bought a tiny restaurant, the Lobster Pot. Forty years later, the family and about 100 employees served 12 to 1,300 meals a day during peak season, prepared in the back of the house by six-month-a-year immigrants from Jamaica. McNulty insisted I find out for myself for how many years they've been coming. 21 years, 22 years. You're the new champ. 24. That beats everybody. Provincetown has a year-round population of just under 3,000, which swells to 10,000 in the summer. Add the estimated 4 to 5 million tourists that visit the Cape every year, and you've got the poster child for peak demand. How do you run a business where all your kids work for you, all your grandchildren work for you, and I don't know if I can open next year? How could you do that? The problem is getting Americans of any vintage to do the back of the housework. So businesses here rely on foreigners, says Jane Nichols Bishop, known as Mama Visa to the workers. In a seasonal economy, there are usually not enough American workers to fill all of the jobs. They're not year-round jobs. So the Congress allowed something called an H-2B. Which allows half-year work if no one else can be found and must be renewed annually for temporary positions like hotel housekeepers and restaurant workers. In the past, Congress has made 66,000 of these visas available annually nationwide. And workers with previous H-2Bs, like almost everyone here, could return without being counted against that limit but not this summer. Congress did not pass the returning worker exemption in the continuing resolution to fund the government, which is where it's always been. And because they didn't do that, the number of visas available was greatly restricted. So there are not enough visas for all the employers to bring in their temporary workforce. The Department of Homeland Security did add another 15,000 visas last week. But with the exemption gone, the total number of H-2Bs is way down, and with employers having to prove irreparable harm to get one of the additional visas, the paperwork that might or might not get a worker in has mushroomed. What an irony for a supposedly anti-red tape administration, says Congressman Bill Keating, who represents the Cape, though of course he's from a district even bluer than its fish. The fix is staring us right in the face. It's just raise the cap on returning workers. We've done it for the last 11 years. But, it they, just, but they just did it now. They, no, they didn't. They created a whole new series of regulations and requirements that would scare any small business person into not using this. Really? Because uh, of politics. It's impossible to run a business when you don't know if you're getting 43 of your 96 people. The rest of them are all Americans. This year we will open six weeks late. Last year we opened six weeks late. Next year we may not open at all. We don't know. D. Yingling got none of the requested 26 H-2B workers for nearby Bubblas by the Bay. It's been next to impossible. We've had to close days, we've had to shorten hours. And a corollary problem, say restaurateurs like Yingling and Mac Hay of Mac Seafood, is that if and when they close... I'd have to lay off, you know, way more than half of the workforce that I have now. American, American workforce. workforce. And look, they say it's not for lack of trying, to recruit natives, that is. In fact, the H-2B application requires employers to offer the jobs locally. I advertise on the internet. I advertise in every job fair. We advertise in every newspaper. Everyone on the entire Cape knows that we're all looking for help. There's nobody here. They will not take seasonal dishwashing and cook jobs for anything. 
But wait a second, counters H2B skeptic Jessica Vaughn of the Center for Immigration Studies. I don't think there's any such thing as a job an American won't do. There are millions of workers in the United States who are not employed, and we need to find a way to match them up with some of these opportunities as well. Employers just aren't trying hard enough, Vaughn insists, while driving down wages and maybe even working conditions. More and more, she says, teens and those with a high school diploma at best. Employers should look to those workers first before they take the easy route out and bring in workers from overseas. I have no issue, no problem. That I would prefer to do that. Trying to bring workers from, uh, you know, Jamaica or Mexico is incredibly challenging, incredibly expensive. Mac Hay worked in kitchens on the Cape since he was 12, now owns six businesses, restaurants and seafood markets. The pay? A dishwasher is $12.50 to a cook can make $17, $18 an hour plus overtime. Not bad. So why aren't these summer jobs for students? The majority of them leave August 12th or August 13th or August 14th. We have a 10-week season. It runs through Labor Day. I can't lose more than half my workforce with three weeks to go, with 30% of my season left. And non-students who are un or underemployed? Americans, they don't want to relocate their life for six months. They don't want to move down, but if they're willing to do it, I'm more than happy to hire them. Like Joy McNulty at the Lobster Pod, Mac Hay utterly depends on visa workers. Egan Bonnie's been with him for 10 seasons. I do cleaning, clean the restaurant, and do all kind of job which no American kids would come and do. These grease shop here, if, filthy grease shop. We, no young kids gonna come around and do this stuff. Keep everything nice. Clean the bathroom. Because they're spoiled? You know, they're, they're spoiled. Seriously, they're spoiled. Really? There's no wage at which they would do these jobs? I've hired every employee who's tried to walk through the door. I've advertised. Most of them don't show up, is the truth. Once I hire them, it's, it's pretty incredible. I've had 17 employees no-show this season after being hired. Now, we did run into an underemployed American worker. So what are you doing this summer? I'm working in a church nursery every Sunday. And have you've applied for other jobs? Yep, that's right. And? I have not heard back from any of them. 17-year-old Claire Vaughn lives two hours from the Cape. So now, why aren't you here? I, I didn't know there were jobs here. <laughs> I had no idea you could do that. Claire Vaughn happens to be the daughter of our immigration skeptic. Now that I know about it, I, I will definitely look. But it turned out that she, like most students, would have to leave before the season was over, and her parents didn't want her living on the Cape. And so we come to the bottom line. Bubbles is down 10% and may actually lose money this year. Mac Hay worries about next year. And the lobster pot? In the six weeks it had to close, it bought a lot fewer lobsters from local fishermen, hired fewer Americans for fewer hours. All of the Americans are out of work for six extra weeks. The state doesn't get the taxes, the vendors don't get the work, nothing happens here and the town collapses. But my people have been with me for 20, 25 years, a lot of them. What harm is that to anybody? We just want to run a restaurant. For the PBS NewsHour, this is economics correspondent Paul Salmon reporting from Cape Cod.